Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to purchase NFTs on the NFT auction site OpenSea. So let's get started. Okay, so you've probably read some news stories about very expensive NFTs being bought and sold by collectors, and you might be wondering, how do I get my hands on NFTs? What is the process that I have to go through? Well, I'm here on the OpenSea website, which is an NFT auction place, and I'm going to show you how to get set up so that you can connect to this site and purchase your own NFTs and store them in your own wallet. There are many ways to buy NFTs, and there are several different networks where you can buy NFTs. I'm just going to focus on the Ethereum network, which is the number one network for buying and selling NFTs. And I'm going to show you how to get an Ethereum wallet set up so that you can link it to OpenSea and start making purchases. We'll start with a wallet. Uh, the wallet that I'm going to be showing you today is MetaMask. MetaMask is a browser extension wallet. I'm going to show you how to get it set up, and I'm going to show you how to improve its security by pairing it with a hardware wallet. In today's case, I'll use the Ledger Nano X. All right, so the first thing we'll do is get uh, MetaMask set up. Now, you can use MetaMask within several different browsers. I'm going to be showing you how to get it set up in Firefox. It's pretty easy. Make sure you're on metamask.io. This is the official MetaMask site. Go ahead and click download. All right, and then we'll just click add to Firefox or add to Chrome or add to Brave. We'll go ahead and confirm that. And this is the startup page for MetaMask. You'll go ahead and click get started. All right, now in today's case, we'll be setting up a brand new wallet. So we'll click create wallet. And it wants us to set a password. All right, once we're done with that, we'll click Create. And there is a little tutorial here that you can go through if you would like to. I'll go ahead and skip that. Now, here is that recovery phrase that I mentioned to you. It's going to be 12 words that you'll need to write down and make sure that they're uh, stored in a safe place and make sure that you write them down in order and number them in case you need to recover at some point. So you'll read left to right, top to bottom, just like you're reading a book. So I'll go ahead and click here and reveal the words, and then I'll go ahead and write them down on a piece of paper. I know that sounds pretty low tech, but this is a security feature. You'll uh, want to write them down on a piece of paper or put them in some sort of repository uh, made of metal, something like that. But definitely uh, apart from your computer. Don't write it down on your computer or save it in a Word file or anything. That's uh, not very secure. You'll notice here that my list is numbered. You want to make sure that you write these down in order. All right, now once you've got your uh, list written down on your piece of paper, we'll uh, click Next. And now we just need to confirm that we've got the words written down in the right order by clicking the words in order. Now, uh, just refer to your piece of paper and make sure that you click all the words in the right order. All right, and once you've done that, click Confirm. And now you've got your uh, seed phrase written down and confirmed in the wallet. We'll click All Done. And now it takes us to our default empty wallet. Notice a few things about the wallet. It's got a zero Ethereum balance, right? Because we just set it up, it's an empty wallet. Notice that up here in the top corner, it indicates that we're on the Ethereum network. This is the default network for MetaMask. And you can also see here your balance of Ethereum, uh, and it's zero. We can start here if we'd like to use this wallet with OpenSea. And it's reasonably secure, but it can be more secure if we use a hardware wallet for storing the private key. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Basically, when we connect a hardware wallet, we're creating a brand new wallet, right? We won't use this wallet at all. We don't need it. It will become a secondary wallet, which is not being used. So in order to do this, we'll click on this account icon up here. We'll just pull it down and say connect hardware wallet. In my case, I'm using a ledger device. Now, before we do this, let's make sure that we have our ledger device connected 
and that we have the pin entered and that we're in the Ethereum app. A lot of people skip this step. They don't have the ledger connected or maybe they have it connected, but they're not in the Ethereum app. And then when they try to connect, it just spins and spins and they wonder what's going on. Well, what's going on is you need to have everything set up properly before you do this connect. All right, so you can see that I have my ledger device connected with the cable to my computer. This is what the screen looks like. Uh, this is the uh, home screen of the device. Now, before we do our connect, let's enter the Ethereum app. All right, I'll just navigate over to the Ethereum app and then I'll click both buttons and uh, it should say application ready. Now, another thing that we'll need to have ready before we make trades on OpenSea is that we need to enable blind signing. All right, in order to do that, we're gonna navigate over to the settings. We'll just use the metal button here. We'll click once, click twice, we'll be in settings. Now we click both buttons to enter settings. And notice that mine says blind signing enabled. So if I click both buttons, it's toggled off. So when you go into the settings, you should see not enabled if it's a brand new device and you've never used blind signing before. So in order to enable it, we just click both buttons once quickly and enable blind signing. All right, and once we've done that, we can navigate over here to the back button and then click both buttons again. And that takes us back to the uh, main page of the Ethereum app, right? It'll say application ready. So make sure you're in the Ethereum app, make sure you've got blind signing enabled, and now we can click ledger here and click continue. All right, it's going to connect to our ledger device. Notice here that there are some balances already. Uh, that is because I already have some Ethereum wallet set up on my device. Now, I've got some great videos on how you set up a Ledger device and get it funded. I'll put links to those in the corner there so that you can uh, check those out if you've never used a Ledger device before. I'll go ahead and choose uh, this wallet that has a uh, sufficient balance for some purchases. And then I'll click Unlock. All right, so notice now we have access to uh, our Ethereum wallet that's stored on our Ledger device. Now this is the same wallet that you would see over in your Ledger Live. So uh, I'm looking at this wallet here. You can see that the balance is the same. You can see that the Ethereum balance matches, right? So we're just looking at the same wallet in a different interface. And no, this is not making the Ledger wallet any less secure by connecting it to MetaMask. That is the reason why MetaMask allows you to connect hardware when you use the connect hardware option, you are connecting your ledger properly to MetaMask and making it more secure by storing the private key offline. So MetaMask is just an interface to the safe and secure hardware wallet that you have. All right, now that we've got a MetaMask set up and we've got our ledger wallet connected, we can even uh, name it if we'd like to. If we click the three dots over here and go to account details, we can uh, rename this, whatever makes sense for us so that we know what wallet this is. All right, and now I wanna show you how to make that initial connection to OpenSea. So uh, we'll just go ahead over here to OpenSea. Make sure you're on OpenSea.io. Now notice over here, I've got this little wallet icon. I'm gonna click here and I wanna connect it to my MetaMask wallet. Notice that MetaMask is the most popular choice on OpenSea. So we'll go ahead and click MetaMask here. And then the MetaMask wallet will pop up and allow us to authorize the connection. We'll click Next. We'll click Connect. Now you can see that we've successfully connected the wallet to OpenSea. If you look up here, you'll see the wallet address and the balance. So if we go back to MetaMask, you can see that the address matches and the balance matches, right? You'll notice also that there's an add funds button that will allow you to transfer some more Ethereum into the wallet if you need it. 
And when we click that, you'll get this little window that pops up that uh, explains that you can transfer more Ethereum from an exchange. So basically, we would just copy this address and then go over to one of our cryptocurrency exchanges. I'll go ahead and demo Binance US. Uh, if I go over to my wallet in my Binance US account, I can see that I don't have any Ethereum in my account. So uh, if that's the case, then I'll go ahead and uh, buy a little crypto up here. I'll choose Ethereum and I can connect this to my bank account. And I'll just make a quick purchase of $50 worth of Ethereum, just so you can see how this works. All right, I like Binance US because their fees are pretty cheap. I'll click Confirm Purchase, and then I can go to the wallet from here. All right, and you can see that I have a pending purchase here, and that it was successful. Now, depending on the exchange, you might have to wait uh, depending also on your, your standing with the exchange, if you make regular purchases, regular withdrawals, it depends on your situation. They may let you withdraw immediately. They may not. So you might have to wait before you can make your withdrawal. I'll go ahead and give it a shot. I'll uh, go over here to withdraw. Now, make sure that you're withdrawing on the ERC-20 network. Don't try to uh, save money by using one of these other networks because uh, it won't appear in your Ethereum wallet if you do that. So you want to make sure you're on the ERC-20 network. Remember, we copied this address into our clipboard. So we'll go back over here and just paste it in. All right, that's the address of our wallet that's connected to OpenSea. I'll choose the max today. I'll go ahead and uh, withdraw the entire 50. I'll hit preview withdrawal. Now notice here I am getting a, an exchange fee. I am getting a withdrawal fee. This is just part of life. Uh, the Ethereum network has fees depending on how busy the network is, but uh, the only way to use OpenSea is with your own self-custody wallet. So you need to get your Ethereum transferred to your wallet. So be aware that there are fees involved in purchasing and transferring crypto. It's just a fact of life. We'll go ahead and hit confirm withdrawal, and then I'll put in my two-factor. All right, they're going to send me a confirmation email. I'll just go over to that email and click confirm withdrawal. And now my uh, withdrawal was submitted. All right, I can go back over to the wallet. We can see here that my uh, Ethereum wallet has a zero available balance and uh, an unavailable balance, which means that it's in transit we can see that my withdrawal is pending. All right, so that's just one example of a cryptocurrency exchange where you can purchase Ethereum and transfer it into your wallet so that you can uh, use that balance to make purchases over on OpenSea. All right, we can get rid of this. All right, and you can see that that additional uh, Ethereum has arrived in the wallet, right? I have a higher balance now. We can go over to MetaMask and see that uh, there is a higher Ethereum balance. And we can also see that uh, I just received that Ethereum that I purchased over on Binance US. All right, so I've showed you how to set up the MetaMask wallet. I've showed you how to connect your uh, Ledger device to make it more secure. I showed you how to add a few more funds into the wallet. So uh, let's explore OpenSea and make a purchase. All right, if we click Explore, there's a lot of uh, collections that are available to purchase. So, uh, for example, if we go to CryptoPunks, you can see that you can purchase NFTs directly. Uh, now, these are pretty expensive. I'm not going to give you any advice on which NFTs to buy. That's up to you. I'm just giving you the mechanics of how you get the wallet set up and how you make purchases. So let's poke around and see if I can find one that's within my price range. Now, if we click on a collection, they're gonna give you some information here at the top uh, to show you the number of items, the number of owners, and the floor price. The floor price is very important. It's uh, the low level of uh, the price for the entire collection. 
So this will give you a good idea of the range of prices that are available. Another thing that you might find helpful on the site are these commands here up at the top where uh, you can help narrow your search. They also have stats and rankings of NFTs. If you're in the game of uh, trying to purchase the most popular, most expensive collectibles, then this is a good resource for that. And then over here in resources, they have a lot of helpful tutorials that can uh, help you get started. All right, so if we want to search by price, we can go over here to all NFTs, and then we have our search tools available. Uh, we can uh, put in our min or maximum price, and I see one here that I can afford, so I can just uh, click buy now. Costs around 50 bucks. I'll complete the purchase. Make sure that your uh, ledger device is connected if you're using a ledger device. Otherwise, if you're just using MetaMask, you can simply confirm within MetaMask. But I've got my ledger device connected, so I'll just uh, show you what's going on on the device. We'll click Complete Purchase. Notice that MetaMask pops up. Uh, notice here you're going to have to pay some uh, Ethereum fees, about $14 worth of fees. I'll click Confirm here. Now, notice my device says Review Transaction. This is the security of my device. Uh, it tells me that I have blind signing enabled, as I mentioned earlier. There's the amount we're spending. There's the address. And we'll click Accept and Send. Just click both buttons very quickly. All right, and there you go. Uh, I made my purchase. I can click View Item. You can see down there at the corner that my uh, transaction was confirmed by MetaMask. So if we want to view our item, we can click here. Right? And then we'll want to go over here to Profile. And you can see my newly purchased NFT. Notice also that I can go over to my Ledger Live and see the same NFT. As I mentioned, these wallets are connected, right? I'm using the same wallet, just looking at it from different interfaces, right? Because I'm using my uh, Ledger device. But the best way to uh, look at it on OpenSea is to uh, simply connect your wallet to OpenSea and then look at it here. Now, if I click on this, I've got some more options. If I'd like to sell this one, I can sell. And then I would set a price. Like, for instance, I could say, oh, I want to sell this for 0.5. Not very likely because I just purchased it, but this will uh, allow you to uh, sell an item. And uh, once you click Complete Listing, you would confirm in MetaMask and on your device, right, in order to list an item for sale. There are other things you can do, too. You can also do a timed auction, uh, and sell it like that if you want to. Uh, that's a little be beyond the scope of this video. I just wanted to show you how to get your hands on an NFT and store it in a wallet safely and securely. So if you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.